The following contains minor spoilers for everything, everywhere, all at once. You have been warned. Greetings, fellow mortals. When I first decided to watch everything, everywhere, all at once, I felt a sense of dread. Not because I thought that the movie was going to be bad, it was because the premise sounded somewhat familiar to me. Back in 2017, I wrote one of my first original books. I loved writing my entire life and wrote books for fun back in those days. While I stand by the ideas, characters, and plot beats of those old stories, I will say that the writing in them comes off as immature now. Originally, it was titled Sleep Jump, but my wife convinced me that Bound was a better title for it. As you can see, everything about it needs work, new drafts, and editing. That's why I won't be letting anyone see that book anytime soon, but I will tell you the premise. The story follows a character named Sam. Every time Sam falls asleep, they wake up in a new body in a new universe. That character is always named Sam, but the lifestyle is drastically different from one universe to the other. The story was based off of an old fear that I had as a child. For a long time, I would lay awake at night wondering what would happen if I woke up to a world that was different from what I knew. What if my parents didn't love me? What if my school and my friends weren't the same? What if something was drastically different from what I remembered? While I got over the irrational fear after the second grade, the memories still stuck with me for a long time. As such, going into everything, everywhere, all at once, I was worried that my concept wouldn't be original anymore. There are many multiverse stories, such as Rick and Morty, the new Doctor Strange movie, and Doctor Who, but none of them felt as close to bound as everything, everywhere, all at once. Fortunately, I didn't have to worry. While some of the themes and concepts are similar, everything, everywhere, all at once is a vastly different story than my own. Which is good. I might have felt bitter if it was too similar, especially if I thought that they did my sleep jump idea better than me. So what is different about the movie? Everything Everywhere All at Once does focus on the multiverse, but in a completely different way. Instead of jumping between dimensions completely, the main character Evelyn uses verse jumping technology in the form of earbuds in order to channel alternate versions of herself. Unlike my story, there is a solid sense of realism in the concepts of the movie. This is the last time I will ever say that everything, everywhere, all at once has any sense of realism at all. While the unexplained technology and seemingly random actions necessary to channel an alternate version of yourself clicked in my mind pretty well, it felt odd to watch the story play out. For every dark and menacing scene, there's a sense of mockery and humor to it. The choreography of the fights were fantastic. In fact, it's the best action I've seen in a while. At the same time, the absolute absurdity of the situations going on in those fights made it so that I was beginning to laugh at the combat rather than being engrossed in the violence. As time goes on, the craziness got so bad that people were fighting with stuff stuck up there. Y you know what? I shouldn't say. By that time, I was openly questioning if this movie could take itself seriously. I found myself growing frustrated. I felt invested in the story, the characters, and the plot, but they seemed to be openly mocking themselves. Right when I thought I wasn't going to like the movie, however, it all started to come together. We got to the climax of the story. Evelyn's constant verse jumping began to cause consequences. While the silliness stayed, it bled into a sense of nihilism that I hadn't been anticipating. By the time that they were wrapping up the plot, I came to a realization. Everything, everywhere, all at once was being serious. In fact, it's a movie that takes everything about itself as seriously as possible. It embraces the absurdity of life. Instead of basking in the depression that can come from realizing that you're a speck of dust in an uncaring, doomed universe, it instead chooses to laugh. If you think about it, everything can be funny in some way. Joking about something doesn't mean that it's not serious. It doesn't mean that the pain that comes from life isn't real. Humor is the greatest coping mechanism and medicine in the world. Sometimes you just have to laugh, because the only other alternative is to cry. Now, I'm not saying to never feel sad or to cry. That's just as important as laughing. 
but the movie addresses what a character becomes if people always bask in their dismay. The connection between Evelyn and the villain Jobu Tapaki grows more and more apparent with each passing moment in the movie. They share the same mental battles and struggles with life. I won't go into too many spoilers, but I will say that Evelyn does begin to question her life choices as the movie goes on. The film outright says that people from other universes think that this version of Evelyn is the biggest failure out of all possible versions of her. As she witnesses realities where she's a movie star, a world-class chef, and other people with amazing skills, she grows to hate her own life. It gets to the point where she tells her husband that she wished that she never married him. That was what made me the most sad out of everything in the movie. While Evelyn's husband Wayman doesn't come off as the smartest person in the world, it's easy to see his blinding love for the people around him. As the movie continued, I felt as if the story would leave him behind, like it would throw him away, that it would say that Evelyn would, in fact, be better without him. Fortunately, that wasn't the case. In fact, Wayman filled the mentor role in the heart of the entire tale at the same time. His part to play was just as important as everyone else's. There's this tendency in recent storytelling to belittle the male characters in terms of personality and skill in order to make the female characters appear better. Just take the new Star Wars and Star Trek, for example. In a way, I see where the writers are coming from. There are plenty of popular older tales from years before where the female characters are little more than props. I think that's why I never particularly liked the old Disney movies like Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and Snow White. I thought they were rather boring. The main characters don't really do anything. But I don't think that swinging the pendulum so far in the other direction fixes these old stories. Instead, it leaves a sense that the writers don't believe that a female character can even lead her own story. It shouldn't matter if the male characters are strong. The heroine can still outshine them in her own movie. In fact, they can learn from the male characters, just like the male characters can learn from the female characters. To quote Waymond, you think I'm weak, don't you? And for a long time, Evelyn believed that. She was wrong. Everyone was wrong. This is how he fights. In a multiverse where you can choose to be anything, choose to be kind, and everything comes together when Evelyn realizes this. Unlike Wayman, she had a character arc. This was her story. My wife and I grew to love her, and no one had to be belittled for that to happen. It was Evelyn's journey, but that didn't mean that she had to do it alone. She, like all people, need others in order to become stronger. In this tale, all the characters were necessary. No one was belittled no matter what, even the minor characters. Their wants, hopes, dreams, fears, and pain were all legitimate in the eyes of the movie. The film didn't make a mockery of any of it, even if the situations were rather humorous. If nothing matters in the multiverse, then that means that everything matters. If no one matters, then everyone matters. And what those people value matters too. And what matters to others doesn't take away from what you gain from your passions. If we care and show respect to other people about what they're experiencing, we can make the world a better place. It reminds me of the Joker movie. In my video of that film, I said that I thought that the movie was begging people to be kind. I can say the same thing about everything, everywhere, all at once. Both of those films plead with people to treat each other just a little bit better. While Joker despairs in the idea that no one will listen to it, everything, everywhere, all at once delights in the idea that it's possible at all. To this movie, the simple idea of being kind is worth throwing a celebration over. At this point, it probably feels like I'm all over the place. That's because that's what everything, everywhere, all at once feels like. It lives up to its title. It's hopeful, it's nihilistic, it's happy, it's depressing. It treats everything as a joke. It treats everything as seriously as can be. If you want me to describe the feelings of the movie in one scene, it would be when they're chasing after a trapped, talking raccoon while doing piggyback rides to save him. And I cared. 
I felt so invested that I was floored. Why are there so many movies where I love talking raccoons? It's, it's weird. After adding everything up, I couldn't call this movie anything but a masterpiece. I thought that it wouldn't age well in my head, but looking back, I wouldn't change a thing about it. At the same time, it's a hard movie to recommend to people. If someone doesn't go into it with the right mindset, everything, everywhere, all at once might bewilder them. The tones, events, pacing, transitions, and flashing lights have been carefully calculated to seem as random as possible at times. At the same time, it's as carefully crafted as can be. I can see people not connecting with it, becoming turned off, or feeling sick from the flashing lights. That last one is seriously understandable. Seizure warning for this one, people. I don't even experience seizures, and I had to turn away at one point in this movie. There are several other things that I want to praise about everything, everywhere, all at once. I want to once again commend the proud, secure feminism that the movie showed. I love the focus on Evelyn's different relationships. I love the discussion about generational pain. I love that it changed my mind on how to discuss LGBT plus issues with older generations. I love the takes on nihilism. I love the pure kindness that seeped out of the movie. I love the fact that everything, everywhere, all at once needed to be a movie. This story could not work in any other medium. Books, TV, video games, comic books, podcasts, none of them would have worked for this tale. There aren't a lot of movies where I can say that. Thus, I think that you should give the movie a try. I won't guarantee that you'll love it as much as my wife and I did, but it's a bold piece of art. It at least deserves a shot because the movie gives me the feeling that the creators would give what you love a chance. Perhaps try not to take it too seriously until it gives you no choice, because if someone is willing to put in the chance to love this film, everything, everywhere, all at once will love you back with even more passion. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like my takes on storytelling, please remember that I will be self-publishing my novel, Dance of Frozen Death, at the start of 2023. I hope that you will check it out. I appreciate you. Do not despair.